There's so much money for female content creators to make. You get 25 lakh rupees for like one reel, dude. There is a reason why we have less female content creators on YouTube. What's the long-term solution? Make place safer for women. I'll have to ask the politicians how. Elder son of the family has no direction in life and is doing YouTube making 9000 rupees a month. You can imagine the pressure, right? We ended up hitting a million subscribers and that was crazy. Netflix is about to just go against its own principle of ad-free content. Jio does not want more content. But you know what Jio did? I made a lot of friends who lived in Bombay, who lived in Delhi. Confidence is killed. That spiral that you enter because of the drugs, alcohol, parties, sex can really take you off of that reason you came to the city. You may not be able to survive in this city. When I was in Reliance, you should look at the atmosphere, bro. It's crazy. It's madness. Everybody works very hard because not even a single minute of glitch is acceptable when IPL is being streamed. I remember your story. You wanted to start a fitness company, but then you started YouTube as an instrument of marketing the fitness company. My biggest dream was that I wanted three gyms in Bombay. That was my ultimate career. Dream. Yeah, and thank God I didn't chase that. How did you get here? It really doesn't matter if you have a billion dollars. If your mother in the same house feels lonely in spite of your presence i think you have done a terrible job think school is easily one of the most respected youtube channels in india i've been in some of the best rooms and people have brought up think school's work as well as the delivery and research that ganesh prasad puts into his youtube channel we did two epic conversations on this particular day this is only part one of that conversation where it's like two youtubers just meet each other for the first time and this is the kind of conversation that we have so don't expect part 1 to be about geopolitics and research and numbers and business part 1 is just about getting to know ganesh prasad the guy i wanted to do this because i've seen so many youtubers come and go but sometimes you see a bit of a dark horse in a youtuber you understand that someone's in it for the long haul and ganesh is totally one of those people so after the longest time i've had one of these youtuber meets youtuber conversations if you're someone who follows things cool regularly i think you'll enjoy this episode a lot part 2 will be much more centered around geopolitics and politics but this one is a very very raw and human conversation enjoy yourselves <music> Welcome to the Ranveer Show, Ganesh Prasad, or should I say, Hi, Ganesh Prasad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, bhai. How are you, bro? I am very good, and I'm very excited to be at this podcast because uh, four and a half years back, I saw your TEDx talk, which you delivered, I guess, in 2018, and that is what inspired me to start my YouTube journey. Oh, okay. Then you spoke about um, how TVF got the 60 crore investment ah. and why it was an indication that YouTube is going to blow up in India. Yeah. So four and a half years later, I'm sitting over here with you in your podcast. So it's very special. No, no. Glad to be hosting. I have a lot to say to you about you. I've not spoken to you much outside or here because I always save it for the camera. Okay. It's my artistic process with the show. Okay. Want to talk a little bit about that talk? Uh, I remember doing it in a corporate setup, uh, and it was in 2018, which is before COVID. which is before the world fast forwarded, and I anticipated that whatever is happening in our world of content now. uh would be happening in 2028 or 2029 mm. but covid just fast forwarded everything and the intention behind that talk was to tell those corporate leaders that hey spend money on us yeah that was the actual intention i got it because you give examples also right <sighs> how times have changed yeah uh dude i mean it, that whole phase of pre covid pre influencer marketing and social media really taking off it was all about convincing people that this is an actual career So uh, very difficult times, honestly, man. Even with Monkey, we had so much trouble, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just convincing people to pay us for our services. And now, when I go for these big corporate events, people bring up Think School. Really? Yeah. Like, okay. Lots of educated people I meet follow your content. Okay. Uh, and their angle on it is, we don't really follow Indian content. There's a bunch who don't even follow TRS, hmm. but they'll follow you. Wow. Especially those people who've been educated abroad, who kind of uh, are very well established in the corporate setup, they'll mm. usually just watch OTT like Netflix, uh, mm. Amazon Prime, and then they'll watch Think School. Oh, so you've captured a very specific, hardcore urban niche. How does it feel? Feels pretty good, man. 
Never thought I'll be here, by the way, because um, we had a target to hit hundred thousand subscribers by the end of twenty twenty one, but we ended up hitting a million subscribers, and that was crazy. So all of this is very overwhelming because I'm still trying to catch up with everything that has happened. So yeah, just utterly grateful for this. What do you mean catch up? Because uh, life has changed drastically over the past two two and a half years. So in twenty twenty one, when I was just getting started with YouTube, Think School was making thirty thousand rupees a month. Five thousand rupees went into expenses. Seven thousand rupees went into rent. What was left was just eighteen thousand rupees. That got split into two parts between me and my co-founder Parsh. So I was making nine thousand rupees a month. Parsh was making nine thousand rupees a month. And our house also, our condition was not so good. As in, our parents are well off, but uh, my brother got detected with a medical condition, and because of that, my parents were extremely tensed. During that time, if the elder son of the family has no direction in life. and is doing youtube making 9000 rupees a month you can imagine the pressure right similarly for parsh things were even worse because he left a 7 lakh rupee per annum job to work on think school he worked at kpmg and um, his father had taken up a loan which was taking away 50 to 60% of his income again you can imagine right but thankfully they did not pressurize us to take short term decisions because they were tensed that is the reason why we are here today and from there to here where we don't have to think about money we can give people a one month off just so that they can recover mentally that feels pretty amazing because when we were at a position where we needed a break we couldn't afford it mm-hmm. but now we can give people breaks and we can afford it so that feels pretty amazing because of monkey i figured how this creator ecosystem works from a very uh kind of x-ray standpoint about where the next bag of money is going towards mm-hmm. what the next trends are there's so much money for female content creators to make but for some reason there's very few female content creators who do youtube full time there are a few but there's a much larger vacuum than there are female content creators basically the demand is much larger than the supply true uh, and i've had the same conversation with so many of my women Instagram content creator friends who are mm. trying to figure out what to do next. I've told all of them that do start a podcast, mm. make women's oriented content because right now beer biceps is having to talk about PCOS and women's issues and all that. Mm. So I don't know why uh, we've not really seen this women's content creator thing take off in the country, especially on YouTube. On Instagram, mm. to a large degree, it has. Mm. But in my eyes, YouTube is truly new age media. Mm. Do you agree with me? Yes and I think there is a reason why we have less female content creators on YouTube that is because Indian society by default is structured and designed to suppress females in our society and you won't believe this I studied in this college called Pimpri Chinchwad College of Engineering there the most ambitious girl wanted a 7 lakhs package and her life was scheduled in such a way that she was to get married in the next 2 years so and that's when i started speaking to a lot of them as to why do they feel like they have to get married why don't they think big and turns out they've always been told that this is exactly what you're supposed to do in life it's like when we got brainwashed for iit do you remember you are also an engineer right so when we were in 11th and 12th we were told that if you don't make it to the iit mm. life will be messed up similarly these people they are told certain things in childhood because of which their brain is just wired to not be ambitious and to have a well scheduled and very predictable life yeah that is the reason why it's like shawshank redemption uh, when you get into the jail institutionalized institutionalized <laughs> so the very thought of freedom is scary and you remember there's this character in uh, shawshank redemption who goes out to the jail but he's not able to catch up with his own freedom and eventually he commits suicide that is a representation of what the indian society has done to women as well as the students in the indian education system we don't know what to do with freedom freedom is scary to us hmm ambition is something that doesn't come naturally to us because we have been educated out of ambition yeah um what's your birth year 1997 okay so you're actually on the like border between millennial and gen z yes i think with a lot of gen z's at least with ambition i see a lot of them really sorted out in terms of really lofty ambitions 
it's it's half and half like some are very very aggressive about their ambitions in life and some mm. are just like not like they don't give a fuck uh i at least that's the sense i get it's half and half Millennial? i think that's only in bombay bro you think so yeah because uh, in pune things are completely different they're still the same what do you mean they're still the same no ambition very structured thinking about what to do in life they don't have the audacity to stand up to their parents and speak their mind out so over here in bombay i see a lot of people who are extremely ambitious who have the audacity to say no to a lot of things who have the audacity to try out new things also because there are a lot of opportunities over here but um, in pune and in tier 3 tier 4 cities of india that's not the case mm okay so maybe the tier 2 tier 3 cities are probably where tier 1 was in 2013 i would say 1990 1990 yeah that far back yeah there's that much of a gap you think yeah because the only thing that they know is government jobs are you talking about people i age like 93 to 90 yes, okay yes. okay i think i'm i'm talking a little bit more about 99 onwards because i think that mm. generation just is very differently wired no i'm saying the people who are living in 2023 in this tier 2 tier 3 cities their mindset is still as good as the people in the 1990s mm when liberalization did not happen right or liberalization had just happened they were just trying to catch up with liberalization hmm. i think the core thought here is at some point if you're truly ambitious you have to consciously not listen to your parents and society absolutely at that one moment you like be a good kid but just choose not to listen to your parents and society in that one moment of time and then give it your all after that yeah uh, i know so many people who kind of become rebellious and then the motivation dies out we've seen that so much over the people over the course of uh, running this whole social media thing man yeah so, i tell this all the time that you know our parents intentions might never be wrong but that doesn't mean their advices will never be wrong mm. so you have to filter that out intention and advice the two different things mm. let's come back to that whole girl guy thing mm. uh for so we two guys so i'm sure there is some thing that you and me are not taking into consideration just due to the fact that we are men Yeah. So there's maybe some level of empathy we're not understanding, but here's still one attempt. Hmm. Completely agree with you in terms of I feel girls and guys are brought up differently in Indian society, whether it's Gen Z or millennials. True. Uh, girls and guys are just treated differently by society. Correct. So it leads Indian girls to one not be ambitious, unfortunately, because I think the ambition is like washed out of them by like societal conditioning. Confidence is killed. Hmm. And when confidence goes away. you are left with what because anyways you have to try and do a lot of things in order to figure out where you want to be in life let's take our example did you know that you'll be here 5 years back no right i remember your story you want to start a fitness company but then you started youtube as an instrument of marketing the fitness company my biggest dream was that i wanted three gyms in bombay that was okay. my ultimate career dream. yeah thank thank god i didn't chase <laughs> that but then you go but then how did you get here you got here because you tried a lot of things you failed in a lot of things and there were less people to put you down but when it comes to girls because confidence is killed you are afraid to try and the first time you fail you feel like oh those people were right maybe i shouldn't be doing this mm. so let me just stick to what my parents say and that's how i think uh, most girls end up wasting their life mm. do you think there's a solution at all I don't think so man because uh I don't know about the solution because I'm not that matured enough and I don't have enough data to comment on it because we are two brothers in our house and our parents have been extremely liberal in fact my mother because she was not very confident she instilled confidence in me right from the beginning she told me that even though today you are following whatever I am saying tomorrow I might tell you something and you might know more than me mm. so you should have the audacity to say that you are wrong and i am right and you should back it up with logic so my my mother always was extremely protective about our confidence about the way we perceive ourselves so i would say we been very lucky because a we were boys and two we have a great mother so i don't know how to fix that problem yeah it's actually down to the women leaders i feel they True. understand women much more obviously uh 
I saw Kiran Mazumdar Shaw's episode with Nikhil Kamath, which is one of my all-time favorite podcasts. And it's first of all, Nikhil's show is so underrated. Uh, I'm sure you watch it as well. Yeah. And secondly, uh, more people generally need to know about Kiran Mazumdar Shaw's story. More girls, especially, need to learn her story. Yeah. Uh, have you seen that episode? No. Okay. She basically just takes us through the whole Biocon story. Mm. how she began okay so her father used to work in company that owned kingfisher okay the malia family's company uh so she thought that okay i kind of might get some support in this industry so she went to australia to do a beer brewing course okay. enjoyed it and that's where she learned her first bits of chemistry okay. when she came back to india for a job they didn't give her a job because mm. they said that in the 70s uh, factory workers wouldn't listen to a woman so she was distraught etc cetera, etc cetera. and then she just kind of figured out her pathway randomly met someone who said that hey if you already know this bit about brewing you might easily learn about enzymes as well uh, and then kind of nudged her to supply his enzyme making company oh so she would make it in india and then supply him some scottish guy hmm. or irish i can't remember hmm. uh, and eventually one thing led to another and then she built out this multi billion dollar company over 3 4 decades wow she takes you through the whole 3 4 decade journey in a very calm collected manner my thought is why don't we see more kiran mazumdar shows and she came out in the 70s and 80s which yeah, is man. like <laughs> it's just crazy to think and we're talking about not having female content creators in 2023 yeah so i'm just not able to wrap my head around this problem i remember entrepreneurs being on trs and talking about how um, it's this was in 2020 that only 4% to 5% of uh, women above the age of 22 are a part of the workforce in india yeah 7 uh, to 8% i guess maybe now it's 7 to 8% yeah but i remember it being some very tiny very number, small number uh back in 2020 kunal shah said this yeah there yeah. there have been other people also like we've had even radhika gupta say something similar hmm. but like i just don't get this problem and the thing is if women don't join the workforce in india it doesn't benefit our gdp we're in your territory you're talking about <laughs> geopolitics You have anything to say about this? No, bro. I think whatever you said is true. I think security of women in the country also plays a very important role. Do you know Captain Raghu Raman? Yeah, he's been at the podcast, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Raghu sir told me a story back then, and um, that taught us a lot about why women are not encouraged to go to work. So if a girl from a village makes it to Bombay, and she is raped. that's a message to all the girls living in the village that if you go out there to work this is what will happen to you as a result it by default results into girls staying in the village and not going to big cities so what he says is that every time a rape happens it is directly hampering the economy of the country most people just look at it as a social issue but he says it is also an economic issue because you're putting out an anecdote to not let women enter the workforce to not enter those places where prosperity actually exists so you're cutting off opportunities which is directly hampering the economy of the country what's the long term solution make place safer for women okay i'll have to ask the politicians how because i i, <laughs> I don't have an idea about administrating a state or a country man yeah it's yeah. a very complex issue bro Mm. You have to understand the psychology of the people who actually do things that are just ridiculous um to be able to find a solution and I don't think you and I have the data set for that because we've been fortunate enough to not be in those kind of surroundings. I want to say something a little animated but I truly believe in this and I saw this on Instagram I saw it in a reel and it really stayed with me. I saw it at age 30. Okay. Though it sounds like a kiddish statement, I think there's some power in it. something called maternal lineage also maternal lineage means that in women um i believe uh, their mitochondria is exactly the same in terms of genetic profile as their mother's mitochondria and its genetic profile mm-hmm. which is exactly the same as their nani as in the mom's mom and it goes back to the mom's 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 mom okay so your ancient great grandmother has the same genetic profile of mitochondria that you have as a woman today okay and e- for men I think it's the X chromosome if I'm not mistaken. 
effectively it means that you are very deeply connected even now to your great 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 grandfather okay so every man is connected to his male bloodline every woman is connected to her a uh, female bloodline okay so the quote i read was that do two things as a man one be the man who breaks the generational trauma hmm. as well as pattern hmm. and the second thing is be the greatest man that your bloodline has ever seen wow that is very powerful man <laughs> and somewhere or the other it's a reflection of our ambition right that's what we want to do it's the ambition of everyone who chooses to live in this fucked up city oh really Yeah man that's actually true because even the people who have come to my house whether that's electrician or that's Raju bhaiya they have this ambition in them and when i spoke to them that's exactly what they told me in a different way they said that you know my family has gone through a lot but uh, i've come to the city because i want to change that effectively the bloodline has been through a lot wow like going back to your great 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 grandfather never thought about that mm mm-hmm. so i mean it's an unbalanced city there's a lack of work life balance there's noise there's pollution but you have the chance as that one man to break your bloodline's pattern that's why they call it the city of dreams yeah yeah and and it's genuinely the city of dreams because of the things you said that the ambition of other people rubs off on you there's mentorship yeah. there's opportunity there's networking uh but you have to just accept that there's going to be sacrifice also <laughs> yes a lot of sacrifices yeah ever since i've been here I find very less time for myself. Back then I used to watch TV for like 4 hours before things school started. But now although I have the best TV I've ever had in my life, I don't get time at all. Yeah. So, getting time for yourself over here amidst the hustle and bustle, that itself is a luxury. So, you have to keep up with the chaos and still keep your mind stable. That's the biggest challenge over here. And more importantly because there are too many diversions, there's also a possibility that you might come here with a lot of ambitions, but because of all the diversions you might end up doing stupid things which will take you down the wrong path as in you have a standard path you've come here for your career and then there's like other correct <sighs> unspoken about reality about this city once you've kind of taken off once you have a stable salary and all hmm. too many parties too many chances to get drunk all the time too many yeah. chances to get high all the time too much sex available easily for both men and women hmm. uh can really help you spiral out of control correct i don't say help you but you got the point like it's it can really make you spiral out of control correct it, and that that spiral that you enter because of the drugs alcohol parties sex can really take you off of that reason you came to the city it's a difficult city to live in this spiral will affect your mental health you won't be able to give your career your all you may not be able to survive in this city correct. you'll have to leave and you see countless stories like that especially in varsova which is like mm. the media neighborhood okay here. okay because money is low in media dude initially mm. like it's very low in media yeah and by media i primarily mean like the world of films ott mm. pie is too small so mm. when you go out in varsova you will see a lot of good looking people who are effectively urban poor oh okay yeah as in people who think even like 200 300 rupees is a big spend of money but they wow. look like Five crore rupees, <laughs> like that good looking, because they're the best looking people who've come from, say, Kashmir or Bengal or wherever. Yeah. Knowing that, okay, if I have to do something with my looks, it's probably in the world of modeling and acting. I'll come to this city. Then they realize the pie is too small, and that's where Madhur Bandarkar films start in their life. Hmm. Madhur Bandarkar films are a little exaggerated, but like some versions of that at least happen. Verso has like taught me a lot, dude. It's taught me to be grateful for content creation. Acha, how? Yeah. bro we are the like it takes time for a content creator's career to take off mm. but i think once it does we are the most efficient money makers yeah that is true like in for for example in the film industry the pie is too small the mm. space for maybe five people to make great money yeah and the remaining it's not as great money as people think like even the top people in the film industry don't make insane amounts of money maybe the top 30 people do yeah and i count the top directors and actors in that same bracket mm. i'm not counting producers in this i'm counting artists is the top 1% yeah. effectively yeah but with content creation the pie is so big yeah um it's so easy to get this done like what we're doing right now in terms of these cameras and all that 20 30 years ago was i mean the equivalent was probably a newsroom which took much larger cameras much larger te- teams larger studios larger rent yeah so kam paise mein we're creating impact and then making better money out of it and more sustainable money 
Correct. So I've I've really found gratitude for content creation. I've told a lot of my actor friends, my model friends about how they can use their face and their communication skills hmm. to get into content to learn social media and then make a lot of money out of it because the pie is that big here. True. And none of them take it up. Why? They're too enamored by the world of films and OTT. Hmm. They have come to Mumbai. A lot of them have either come to Mumbai for the love of acting, like genuinely the love for the art form. Hmm. Or for the love of glamour, it's one of the two, hmm. and we are neither. We don't provide them with their acting art appreciation, and we. This is not a glamorous industry, dude. We are like chefs, effectively. <laughs> you, it's actually getting glamorous with time, especially with Bhuvan Bam. You you think so? Yeah, man. Bhuvan is a star, bro. I think Bhuvan is like an exception, hmm. uh, and he's set the precedent for that pathway for content creators in terms of people who want to get into acting yeah. but I, as much as i know bhuvan i think even he really loves acting yeah like he really really enjoys it as the he's an artist yeah like we hang out with him that's the energy he gives out always my question is how many spots are available like that in content creation in the world of acting in terms of this what i'm trying to say mm. is that there's going to be very few content creators who'll actually be able to transition there because that pie is too small hmm. and that's what i figured by being in versova man bro i think the complete opposite because buan is not an exception i believe he's a pioneer he's the first one to achieve that level and i think by doing so he has put out multiple statements statement number 1 that a creator could be a beautiful wonderful super talented actor number 2 if you don't produce his series he will do it by himself and get half a billion views and that is a very big statement in itself number 3 it says that it puts out a statement for the content creators that this is your bar now like earlier what was the bar 1 million subscribers you remember right when we hit 1 million subscribers mm -hmm. it felt like we won the world yeah but then after that we were like what to do next and that's how we started making benchmarks for ourselves we had very few people to look up to and say for example i had people like you to look up to like you guys are building businesses you guys are doing great stuff so i had you guys to look up to how many people did you have to look up to very few right so as people like bhuvan achieve these extraordinary feats it will put out a lot of statements and it will inspire more people to do something as remarkable as he has done and i'm sure there will be a lot of actors out there who would want to be like bhuvan and now they have like a trajectory that they can follow to become a star like bhuvan and bhuvan is just getting started it's been what 8 years 10 years since he's been here he's just getting started and in the next 5 to 6 years i believe people like bhuvan will set new benchmarks and that will inspire more people and when that does people know the power of distribution just like you were convincing people during that time to pay you money right now bhuvan is doing that for creators who want to become actors mm. and more importantly i've also seen creators who settle for very less so i work very closely with iplex i don't know if you know about neil you know neil right so neil tells me very often that the problem with most content creators especially in the entertainment sector is that they settle for very less even if you give them 5 minutes of screen time in a movie they are more than happy with it it's a great thing no doubt but he says that as an outsider we can see that this creator is capable of playing the lead role but that creator is settling for less as a result the positioning in the industry is being destroyed so he said that we need people who can set that benchmark that content creators could take up the lead role so that the aspirations can be better and that is how i believe things will change now i don't know whether they will for sure or not but i'm sure that with buan things are by default bound to change We don't know the magnitude of the change, but I'm sure it will happen in the next three to five years if there are four to five more Bhuvans in the country who set those new benchmarks. Okay. Firstly, I, let's talk about Bhuvan. I literally think he's the equivalent of Shah Rukh Khan in our world. Correct. Okay. Like there is no one. Like he's just playing his own different uh, royal game. He is Shah Rukh Khan of YouTube India. Correct. I feel there's two parts for content creators. One is the part all of us are on, which is the content creator to business thing. 
which actually i think is a much more practical practical way of it's very practical yeah. it's very easy it's very strategic it's very calculative and it's more importantly it's very predictable yeah so you can know how you did this quarter you can see the things that you've done wrong and you can improve the next quarter yeah right but that's not the case with entertainers unfortunately i have noticed that opportunities in the film industry are given to the uh people who are in acting for the sake of art mm. but the thing is these massive acting opportunities in mainstream cinema mainstream ott as far as i know from my friend panjami ghavari who's a casting director she said that they look out for people who are the complete package okay so you need to be an 8 on 10 actor you need to be good at acting you need mm. to have a lot of screen presence you need to be tall good body good looking well spoken mm. and then you'll start being given opportunities wow that's where it starts yeah you'll you'll start being given opportunities i have a friend called prem parija he plays football with me okay uh he is 1994 born so 29 mm. uh he came to bombay when he was 19 to become an actor he's mm. got one of the best physiques i've seen in my life okay and recently after 10 years of hustle mm. he got his first mainstream show it's called commando uh vidyut jambal had like played the old uh Pers- older commando in that same franchise mm. he's the new face in that same franchise oh i think it's called commando 2 if i'm not mistaken uh and it's doing well mm. but it took him 10 years of grinding he worked as a assistant director casting director etc uh went for martial arts classes uh made built an insane physique mm. networked a lot was an overall nice dude learned a lot and after 10 years an outsider cracked it and he is one of the guys who's considered like a complete package good looking good body mm. good height well spoken etc but there's very less room and this i know for a fact because i can't remember who told me this it was a, a film producer geo has entered the ott game mm. and kind of f shit up for the rest of them in the same yeah. way that they f shit up for uh etel and vodafone etc and i say that as a compliment to geo <laughs> that they can just go into an industry and dominate yeah uh so the trend from 2020 to about 22 was that there was a lot more ott users in the country netflix amazon so there was a huge demand for shows yeah then the supply became more than the demand and now there's not that much of a demand for the shows it's actually the complete opposite bro because um, these ott platforms like prime video Jio and Netflix not Netflix but Prime Video and Jio particularly they have gone on to acquire a lot more users and now they're extremely demanding let's say today you open up Prime Video how many shows do you have to watch today you will watch Bombay Meri Jaan after you're done with that show what do you have so now these streaming platforms have been pressurized to either acquire more content or to produce more content and that will result into another explosion of the industry so this is the narrative i had got mm. for all of the last two years mm. and it's this year like i remember speaking to panjami mm. couple of months ago mm. and she said that dude we don't know but things have gone very dry okay and they attributed to jio coming into the game okay uh, so you're saying that things have gone dry because jio is producing more or jio does not want more content jio has made a lot of stuff free okay firstly let's break this down because mm. even i don't know the exact dynamics and we're not from the film industry to mm. have an exact insight mm. i'm talking based on what i have learned from ott show producers for casting directors etc mm. uh there is an overall lesser quantity of shows being made because mm. netflix amazon all these guys are playing very carefully uh because i believe if i'm not mistaken they are not expanding at the speed that they expected they will expand at yeah that's uh, true and a big reason for that is jio coming in and offering a free alternative yeah so the difference is that when netflix came into the picture they thought they will build a business model which will be svod subscription video on demand so it's svod but then they realized that the purchase power in india is very low so they have to switch to an avod model add video on demand <laughs> now when this happened netflix is literally netflix is about to just go against its own principle of ad free content as in they putting advertising within the content they might now start putting out advertisements all over the world no in india in india okay but you know what jio did they knew that all along because they've been in this market for a very long time 
So they knew that if at all you want to get into OTT and if you want to make it affordable for people, you have to have an AVOD model. So we will give it for free to a lot of people and we will show ads and we'll make money out of it. Now, this is again a theory which Jio is testing out and they're acquiring more and more users at the bottom of the pyramid. This is especially with the Jio phones. So Jio aims to convert 100 million out of the 250 million 2G feature phone users into 4G Jio phone users. When they do, in this phone, there is only Jio cinema and you cannot have another SIM. Now, when these people get Jio cinema and they watch IPL, which is being streamed in Jio cinema, what happens? A lot of people watch IPL, they watch a lot of ads and hence, the cost of the ad space goes up. So as Jio acquires more and more users, and for that matter, any platform, when they acquire more and more users and they're able to give more ad reach to their sponsors, they will eventually start making a lot of money. So this is the theory that is out there. Now things might be dry because of multiple reasons. Number one could just be because after COVID, people are not consuming as much content. That's quite possible. Number two, it's possible that there isn't a lot of money in the market. And number three, it's possible that they're preparing for something even bigger. So just because Jio has 100 million users doesn't mean everybody will have a great experience. There's also a lot of tech that goes into the back end. In fact, for IPL, when I was in Reliance, you should look at the atmosphere. Bro, it's crazy. It's madness. Everybody works very hard because not even a single minute of glitch is acceptable when IPL is being um, when IPL is being streamed. So there are a lot of factors and not just about talent or the movie producers and stuff like that. There are a lot more factors that go behind it. One of them is business. Number two is the cost at which you can actually borrow money from. And more importantly, it's about how much they are prepared to acquire those users and give them a great experience. So once this AVOD model add video on demand becomes more sustainable, there'll be more money in the market. It's just like TV. When television first started out, how many people were running ads? In fact, if I'm not wrong, the first television ad was actually a radio ad played on television. So people did not know what to do with television. But suddenly, over the due course of 10 to 20 years, television became extremely sustainable. And that's when people realized that if you spend more money on television, that's actually going to get you 5x, 10x more return as compared to radio because in radio, the slots are extremely overrated. And over there, things are very underrated. Just like that, right now, there could be a lot of companies who are pouring in a lot of money into TV and they, they may not be pouring in a lot of money into OTT. But then soon enough, they will realize that it's extremely underrated. It's just like content creation, bro. Three to four years back, if a 1 million subscriber YouTuber wanted to demand money from the sponsors, it was very difficult. Today, it's very easy because the sponsors realize that this is an underrated um, ad stream and we got to put in more money over there. So that is how the industry will, industry will slowly shift. And just like today, there is no dearth of TV shows. There wouldn't be any dearth of content on these OTT platforms. In fact, some of them will actually shift the TV shows from TV to OTT or have, have them streamed in both the platforms because my nani she doesn't watch tv by the way mm. she watches ott only so these are the paradigms of the market and they will begin to shift once the market calibrates okay okay no no i hear you now i'm convinced like maybe after we broke it down and maybe the dry phase is possibly just because there's a transition phase and people are figuring out what to do especially correct. with geo entering correct so maybe if i speak to panjami three four months later she'll be like no business is back to normal yeah. Now let's go one layer deep on why business is back to normal. I think India wants a lot of escapism. It's why Big Boss works. It's why Kapil Sharma also works. And there'll always be room for comedy and entertainment in India. Yeah. Which will create a demand for entertaining, masala-oriented uh, stories. Now, this is where it gets interesting. When there's a demand for these masaladar stories, will... Geo be okay purchasing from Bhuvan's production house and the production house of other content creators? I believe yes, they might be because content creators understand content, understand how to grip the attention of masses. Hmm. Uh, and Bhuvan's is the first person in that game to actually say, hey, this is a show I've made. You might see a lot of these other entertainment-based creators also making shows. Yeah. But 
we're waiting for that point in the timeline which brings me back to varsova and acting mm. and this whole struggling energy i see all around mm. uh, this area uh again i feel because a lot of these guys and girls have come from interior india or small towns and they're not hanging out in the right circles which is a huge factor mm. uh their priorities are not right when it comes to media and they're not focusing enough on making money correct uh and they're fighting for a very small pie now mm. even if that pie becomes much larger year from now as we figured from this whole steel manning conversation mm. for one year they're still going to face rejection they're still going to be fighting for the small pie and many of them will end up leaving yeah uh i am still a little cynical about this timeline while we're saying a one year mark what bhuvan has done is not easy yeah and i don't see enough hustle in the world of content creation hmm. especially in the entertainment domain i have a friend called rj mehwash okay. she's got into film production okay. but she's the only other person i know hmm. i don't see enough grind because instagram pays you so f- well <laughs> it makes you comfortable after a certain point you get 25 lakh rupees for like one reel dude if you're a comedy content creator yeah. 25 lakh what do you do with 25 lakh rupees that is insane to be able to have that large an audience that you command 25 lakh rupees for a reel it means that you've understood the masses it likely means that you've come out of the masses it likely means that you're a middle class kid whose family has never seen a 25 lakh rupee check in one go correct that money makes most content creators lazy correct which makes me respect bhuvan even more which also makes me slightly cynical and makes me think that bhuvan's sharukh khan of this space and we won't i don't think we're going i'm i'll be surprised if we see hmm. that kind of hustle from other people which is why i think he's a big exception True. in this whole game you know right now like i said he might look like an exception but if more people come in they will see bhuvan as a pioneer okay so i think do you want to cap out this film industry and content angle yeah let's move to something okay. else now <laughs> uh let's move on to this predictable path hmm this is always made efficiency based sense to me yeah if you're getting into content creation set up your businesses first correct make the money because then you'll figure out how to produce your films if at all you want to hmm i also kind of feel with acting and maybe this is something i've learned off the show hmm through all the actors i've met um it's a very it's it's a way more brutal job than business correct <laughs> too much pressures too many mental health battles a lot of your worth value a uh, repute a uh, success metrics are based on that last film that you've made which you've dedicated your last year to correct so like one year of mehnat can easily flop as well with content it's like every day we're doing something so yeah you get to decide your journey uh, there is a trade off uh, but at some point if you want to reduce the trade off focus on the business side hmm uh, and i think now i mean even on the podcast we've spoken a lot about content creation to business as a transition mm-hmm. but i think the janta generally knows this now yeah do you think so i i think the janta is getting very smart dude like mm. and and that's something i'm facing a challenge with as a podcaster mm. i think my hindi audience is ahead of my english audience oh yeah. okay what we were just talking about off screen mm. that every minute has to matter to the english audience the hindi audience is not like that mm. the hindi audience just wants to get to know you yeah and they want to uh fill their time with something valuable hmm. the english audience will demand that you put value in their Correct. life and i don't blame them it's two different upbringings two different parts of society yeah uh, but i enjoy the hindi podcast a lot more <laughs> for that reason it's that's why there is a lot of pressure on the content writers of think school and the editors of think school because even if you get that even if you get like one stat wrong yeah or even if there is a remote possibility of somebody misinterpreting something that we have said right people will drop a comment mm. and it will be like a detailed comment as to why this stat could mislead some people into believing something else yeah and that is the reason why value per minute at think school we try to keep it peak don't you think nowadays it's become value per second almost yeah man <laughs> per second <laughs> like especially with reels audiences you're battling with short content to like keep people gripped um with infotainment or i don't know with think school specifically that's not the case bro because uh, what we've realized is that when we used to make 10 minute videos people used to watch it then we started stretching so i have a different theory i say let's push the intellect of the audience as far as it can get and see where is that limit so as i started pushing the utility value of think school's content got better and better so when we hit the 20 minute mark 
professors started to use think school videos as study materials and i'm not talking about like normal colleges i'm talking about i am bangalore mm. so those professors started to use think school videos as study materials Very interesting. to set the premise for the lecture you effectively trained your own audience up to a point where now the content has more uses than just being entertainment or something you watch arams correct so what i tell my team is that we have a philosophy at think school we make content for the most sincere student so i assume that if somebody is watching a think school video he or she is sitting down with a pen and paper and they're taking notes and you won't believe me an i am bangalore student drop me a text saying that he got into i am bangalore because think school's videos helped him a lot during the interview and he has two full notebooks of think school notes and that got me thinking that this is exactly what we were imagining about a year back that students would do and that was happening so we make content for the most sincere student that is the reason why you will see a lot of flow charts we give out study materials because we don't treat our channel as an infotainment channel we treat it like a business school on the internet mm. and what would a business school on the internet do it would give you enormous value give you game changing insights and it will push your intellect and teach you new things every time it occupies your time that has been the philosophy of think school as a result we have escaped that categorization of infotainment and we've gone one level above to be perceived as a business school as study material and for upsc students also we've become study materials because if you look at all the other upsc channels they don't have very high production quality but if you look at a think school geopolitical case study you will always you will almost get this feel that you're watching a documentary mm. so that way what happens is that they get the information and now it is easily memorable so they're able to recollect that when they write the upsc paper that is the reason why even geopolitical content has now become study material for business students business case studies have become study material that's for sure but because geopolitics and economics and government policy is not taught very well in b schools these content pieces have become that instrument of extra edge during their interview during group discussions and during projects in fact when i went to my friend's wedding his cousin used to use think school videos so that he could write better assignments only to discover that the teacher also watches think school and she was like dude you copied this from think school because two other people have also copied this assignment from think school damn so that is a level at which we always imagined think school to be but now i can say this with assurance that it has become reality hmm i have so much to say here man um again what i said at the start of the podcast that i've been in rooms with big corporates who've referenced think school and then said that you know why i was think school cuz i really value my time so it's effectively what you said about a uh, per second value uh secondly i remember trying to do this with health oriented content back in 2016 or 17 hmm. where we tried pushing the envelope when it comes to the scientific details about fitness and health because we were just a fitness channel back then mm. and the audience rejected it back then oh okay and i got so demotivated because i had spent two days researching about a particular topic mm. and i realized that maybe audience is just, just not interested mm. to learn about fats and how fat consumption works yeah uh, in that much detail at that point but maybe the argument could be made that even if i make that video today it may not do well mm. i think people are watching your stuff because your content uh, other than everything you said is also somewhere related to current affairs correct good knowledge about current affairs leads to good social projection in many rooms yeah. and good social projection along with knowledge about current affairs along with the kind of business content you make leads to better career potential and opportunities correct so there's there is that selfish i want to become rich by watching ganesh yeah uh, angle so people have told me countless times that uh, i went to this party there were these five people who were talking about uk's economic crisis i just barged in and i explained the whole thing to them <laughs> and then they were all very quiet they were astonished by the kind of knowledge that i had and that's when i realized that think school is also a very good instrument of show off mm. so they can consume content not tell anybody else and then suddenly sound very smart in your friend circle mm. social projection yeah why why do human beings want to become richer on a very primal level hmm i actually never thought about that 
because the only reason why i wanted to get rich is so that i can be more independent and do what i always wanted to do so like i could have the best dish so like i could stay at the best places so that i could take my friends to amazing places so that i can make my parents life more comfortable that's always been like the primary agenda and uh, now that it has happened seems like yeah things cool worked mm and think school is also going to make the pro jenny that you give rise to <laughs> have a better quality of yes. life yes man do you ever think about kids and shit like having kids yes um i have a girlfriend and we've been dating for about 4 and a half years so we think about kids a lot and uh, i don't know how many of them i'm going to have i'm extremely scared because i was a terrible kid extremely mischievous and my mom faced a lot of trouble while raising me so i'm assuming that if i ever have a kid like myself my life is going to be disrupted <laughs> <laughs> uh i think about this kid thing a lot mm-hmm. because uh at least with a lot of people my age who are now married dude i'm one of the few people in my friend group who's not married or who's not in a long term relationship now a lot of them are talking about these kid conversations mm. therefore you're also getting to hear a lot of them talk about not having kids there's a lot of people my age who don't want to have kids mm. especially in cities because it's a huge trade off yeah and you see people who are 80s born 70s born who don't have kids and they're some of the happiest people i know honestly yeah also some of the saddest also people also some of the saddest also yeah. it's an extreme so you're by not having kids you're going to go down that gambling route correct and either your life is going to get fucked <laughs> or you're going to be really happy correct uh, it's one of the two uh and then uh, kids is a safer kind of tried and tested averaged out model yeah. but it's 20 years of your life the consciousness i wake up with every day for my career for my team for building out whatever i'm building out mm. some of that is going to be channelized towards my children yeah to the 11 kids <laughs> <laughs> no but realistically speaking say if i have two or three hmm again okay, no i'm at least going to have two or three yeah how much of a chunk of my consciousness is going to go there how is it going to change my experience of life hmm. i have friends who are children of like multi millionaires and billionaires and all of them almost all of them say that they had an unbalanced relationship with their father because the father was building out the empire true i don't want to be that as well so that is very important bro and here's where you know work life balance comes in very very work life balance over here is very important so two years back i was working like 7 days a week 16 to 17 hours a day very easily and um if you look at my videos back then i was not at all groomed was wearing the first thing that i got the lighting was bad the face was sleep deprived and things were really really bad but um, i was kind of loving it because of the growth that we were experiencing but then there was a point in time i think this is about one and a half years back if i'm not wrong where i realized that if i have to have a healthy relationship with my parents with my friends with my girlfriend i have to make sure that i work less and it's not like i was being very effective also so during that time there were only two people running the company me and my chief editor that's it pash was taking care of the sponsorships and both of us we were grinding for like 7 days a week we used to stay in the office for 7 days a week just to post two good youtube videos but the moment that hit me I started to build systems and when I started to build systems very consciously today I am able to sit with you over here because I know for sure that today's video is taken care of by the team so I think as we grow up it is important to understand that no matter how hard we work unless we build systems we won't work efficiently and once we build out systems we'll be able to buy a lot of time and what we do with that time is very important because it really doesn't matter if you have a billion dollars if your mother in the same house feels lonely in spite of your presence i think you have done a terrible job so it's not just the profession that matters it is also the people around you who matter and you have to understand that they're both different duties as much as it is important for you to work for your employees and your customers it is equally important to work for your parents your spouse your children so that you don't give them that traumatic feeling of having everything and yet nothing it is by far the most terrible thing to have so i think about it a lot and i'm and i put in conscious efforts to make sure that we're building better systems and i'm not becoming this hustler who's just whiling away life while making money 
man i thought i'm going to talk to you about geopolitics <laughs> <laughs> and here we're talking about life and all that but uh, i think it's been an hour or so that we've been speaking so let's just do a sequel episode which is much more related to think school than it will be to ganesh but i appreciate you opening up on this one thank you so much for having me bro even i was prepared for geopolitics only by the way <laughs> I've been preparing a lot, saying that you know I'm going to be at one wee show. I have to be well prepared. Turns out the syllabus just changed. Yeah, it was just about <laughs> life, man. Uh, yeah. But I promise you, the next one's going to be explosive. So let's head straight into it. So that was the episode for today. If you're someone who enjoyed this particular episode, I guarantee it you will enjoy the heck out of the next one because it's much more centered around the subjects that Ganesh is known for. uh usually i speak about my guest at the end of every episode what i will say is that there was no nakab in this one there was no masks in this one this is who ganesh prasad is he's really think school through and through and i'm sure you felt it at the end of this episode as well part 2 is extremely epic part 2 is extremely detailed and part 2 is also slightly dark watch out for it because trs with ganesh prasad we'll be back very soon